So just a quick introduction to um, Alboron, um, who we are and what we do. So <clears throat> here we are based in, based in Oxford in, in the UK. Um, we've been doing what we do for over 15 years now, um, about 10 staff members currently. And yeah, our, our core things that we do, really the main core thing is bespoke software development. So building, building software systems for people who need bespoke software for whatever they need it for. Um, and uh, also we help these days a lot with integrations between systems as well, where people have an off the shelf system and they need to integrate it with perhaps another piece of software or even a piece of bespoke software, we can help with that. And um, we also do web-based work as well, websites and web development too. And linked to all of that, we look after the systems that we build and we also look after the systems that sometimes other people have built. Um, so we provide hosting, maintenance and support services there with a, a big emphasis on security and um, keeping systems safe and secure. And um, <clears throat> we're now part of the TI group since about a year ago. Uh, TI group is a, a larger software group based in Dublin um, with um, related specialities to ours. There we go, there's a summary again of the <clears throat> the main services and of course the additional one there um, is the SharePoint. So we've um, for many years uh, had a, a SharePoint division um, of, of Alboron running alongside the other um, areas that we do. And um, you know we find that increasingly with um, with Microsoft 365 people have got SharePoint as, as part of what they, uh, they have from Microsoft and yet they're not making the best use of it. And we uh, are very happy to help people to you know, understand what you can do in SharePoint and uh, help them to yeah achieve what they what they need to do. And we're sort of flexible about how we do that. <clears throat> Just some uh, some of the clients we've worked with there. Quite a few in the educational sector, also quite a lot of science and tech in the Oxford area. So we, um, for those of you who are local, you may know the Harwell Complex, where there's quite a lot of fantastic science going on. Um, but a range of different clients, um, actually with bespoke software, you know, we can work in any sector, it doesn't really matter. So we have a whole range of different client types, which is uh, was fun. And here are a couple of uh, case studies. <clears throat> um, so uh, the Jesus College Ox one was a fairly straightforward marketing website, I would say. And the uh, Rosalind Franklin Institute was more of a piece of software where we were building a bespoke piece of system, a uh, piece of software that uh, they use to manage um, applications from scientific groups to come and work at the Institute there. And then we've got um, an example of a SharePoint intranet that we built for Drax. That's a large uh, power group, group of power companies who wanted a, uh, a, a SharePoint intranet for their internal communication amongst the staff, sharing information amongst the staff and um, building a sense of uh, oneness amongst the sort of different companies within the group. So they asked us to help with that. Um, and uh, also a project there for um, one of the Oxford colleges, um, again, helping them to use their SharePoint system better and integrate with some of the other university systems. And yeah, just some sort of points about us there. You know, I think, um, you know, we're, we're local in Oxford, but working, you know, around the UK. Um, and, um, you know, we like to feel like a sort of local software partner for, for people, um, you know, with a whole range of experience. And now with, um, you know, having the, <clears throat> the larger software group being part of the software group gives us access to uh, a wider range of help as well, which is good. And there are some contact details. So I think that's that's it from me. So if I stop sharing my screen, James, you'll take over, won't you? And um, I just need to remember to say to people, um, you know, do do ask questions, please, if you'd like to at any point uh, through the chat. And um, you know, James will probably deal with those at the end. But do ask them as you think of them. And um, James, over to you. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks, Tim. Um, good morning, everyone. So similar saying, I'm James McDowell. I'm the senior Microsoft consultant at Alperon. 
Um, and today we're going to look at um, a couple of applications and then a feature um, within Microsoft 365, these are all included, um, that can help you um, manage your tasks, stay on top of your sort of workloads, and also help you to manage your time um, a bit better. Uh, and we'll look at a little bit of the integration uh, involved in that as well. Um, so the first one, as you can see here, is um, Microsoft Planner. Um, now, this is an application It's included, as I said, in uh, 365. Um, like all the 365 apps, it can be accessed via a web browser online, um, but it also has a um, smartphone and tablet version um, as well. Um, and it's fully integrated into SharePoint, um, so you can actually create new plans from within your SharePoint sites without going to the actual dedicated um, planner app. Um, it's a task management tool. It's kind of, I'd explain it as a, a simplified version of sort of Microsoft Project or maybe other project management um, software packages that you've used. Um, and this seems to be a really good one um, for managing tasks within your team or even managing projects. Um, and the reason why I think it's, it's actually a good option is it's a lot simpler to understand and use than maybe project. Project's quite complex. And if you're not a kind of trained project manager, you may not understand all the, the features in project. Whereas this application can be used by a wide range of people. Um, um, I've used it myself um, and lots of people pick it up quite quickly. Um, so within Planner itself, um, this is also actually one of the resources that's made available to you when you create a Microsoft 365 group. I think we've touched on that in previous webinars. So if you create a SharePoint site or a Teams channel, it creates a 365 group with a range of resources. And one of the resources is the ability to create group plans. Uh, and once you've created them, you can embed them in SharePoint or quite usefully, you can actually pin them in your Teams channel so your um, team can work on plans um, in Microsoft Teams without having to go out to the separate app. And that's uh, that's quite a useful feature. Um, so to create a new plan, obviously there's the option on the menu on the left. Um, you can either start from scratch with a, a blank plan or Microsoft does provide some um, templates. And um, you can see they've, they've got a project management one or employee onboarding. There's a few in there to sort of give you a, a head start on some of these. Um, but for the purposes of the demo, we'll go for a blank blank plan. Um, just give it a name. Um, and then you've got the option there to add it to an existing group. So this is what I was saying about the group resources. So any groups that you're a member of uh, will appear in this list and you can actually assign it and it will automatically include everyone in that group in that plan. Um, you can also set uh, privacy and sensitivity, um, whether you want to make it a private plan that's just within your team or if you want to make it public and actually make it available to a wider audience, um, entirely up to you. But those, um, um, the add to a group is an optional um, choice, um, so you don't actually need to do that if you don't want to. So we'll create the plan. Hopefully this is going to fire up. Okay, so this then takes you through to the, the planner um, canvas. As you can see, it's added it to my list of um, plans on the left-hand side. Um, there's a few options here now. So um, there's, as you can see, it shows you that you're added in as a member of this um, plan. If you go to members, if you've not actually included a group and you've actually uh, created this just for yourself as I did, you can actually go in and search for people. So you can type their names in. So we could add Tim to this. Um, and it will just search for 365 profiles. And Tim is now added to this plan, so he would have access to this when he comes in. Um, you can go into, um, there's a whole range of options, but um, in plan settings, um, you can actually choose a background if you want to make it a bit more dynamic. Um, you can also, uh, that's where you've got the option to delete, delete the plan. But you can also set uh, group details and also notification details. And these are really useful when you actually start using this plan, particularly around projects. Because um, what will happen is when you create tasks and assign them to people, they will actually receive notifications, firstly, that they've had a task assigned to them, but it also tracks the due dates. So they'll get reminders when the due date's approaching. And then if, if it actually goes past its due date, you'll constantly get reminders. So it allows you to 
be notified and, and not have to keep come back in and check in. You'll actually get prompted uh, when you've got tasks due. Um, there's a few views as well. I'm gonna have to move view out of the way. Um, so by default, it will show you board view, um, but you can uh, go for a grid where it will put it sort of like um, a list of, of task items. Um, it's also got inbuilt charts. So once you start monitoring tasks, it will show you statuses, priorities, and, and it builds all that for you visually. Or schedule view where it actually puts the individual tasks in a calendar so you can actually see um, on a calendar view when, when you've got um, tasks coming and when they're due. Um, obviously, that's that's complete preference for the user. Now, the way it's set up is you've got what they call buckets. These are essentially columns. Um, when you start a plan from scratch, you will have um, this first col column called to do, um, but you can rename it. Um, you can call it whatever you like, and you can add as many buckets as you need um, and give them um, sensible names. So you kind of it allows you to group related tasks together um to make it easier to see um to add a task it's pre put one in there for me now but you can just select the add task as well um give it a name uh you as allows you to set a due date so if we say next friday which is actually my birthday um and then it allows you to assign it so when you click assign anyone that's a member of this plan who's been added you can actually assign that task to them so i could assign this one to tim say and he will now get a notification to say he's now been assigned this task um, and he'll have a link to go through and do it. And then you select add, select add task. That then places the task in that bucket um, and you can add as many tasks as you need. Um, once it's been created, you can actually go into the task details and then actually start populating this with information about the task. Um, so it will tell you what bucket it's in, um, You've got a progress status, which you can set from not started to in progress or completed. Uh, you can change the priority, obviously start and due dates. Um, you can have it as a repeat task, so you can have recurrences. Um, you can leave notes here, which will be visible to your team members. Uh, you can create checklists of items, sub items that you may need to achieve. Um, you can attach documents, hyperlinks. Uh, you can leave comments for your team. Um, and it will even at the bottom now start suggesting documents using AI. Um, so it will actually analyze what this task is and actually recommend potential documents that you may want to attach to this task. So there's quite a lot of information you can put in here. Um, you can also choose whether some of this information is visible on the main screen. So at the moment, it's just showing who it's assigned to, the title and the date. But if you have checklist items, for example, you can have them visible as well. So people can quickly see uh, what that task is about and, and actually more importantly how much of that task has been completed um, if you end up with an incredibly busy plan and you've got lots and lots of buckets and lots and lots of tasks um, and you go in there and you want to see what's related to you or related to another team member you can actually click on their name from the members list and it will highlight the tasks that have been assigned to them so if you wanted a quick snapshot of, of how much work you've got or how much has been assigned to you you can click your name and any tasks that are assigned to you will change color. Um, so that's quite useful as well, particularly if you're using this, say in a project management sense, um, obviously you would have a lot of information in here. Um, so this is, yeah, Microsoft Planner, really useful. Um, you can use it on the go because it does have a, a smartphone desktop app. Um, and it's something I've used before, software we're using with clients at the moment, and they do find it really useful for sort of task management. Um, one thing I will add, if any of you are familiar with Agile methodologies, um, you can actually use it as a Kanban board, um, a bit like Trello, if any of you are familiar to that. And I'll just quickly show you um, what I mean by that. So, I've created, so we've got a to-do list uh, bucket. I've just created an in-progress one. If I create a completed one, and then you can actually drag and drop tasks between buckets. So you can actually move it just like a Kanban board um, and move it across. So some people don't use it for, uh, for project management. Some people use it for Kanban or, um, or just routine tasks within their team so that managers can see 
who's doing what and when. Um, so yeah, it's a really useful, um, really useful feature. Just got to try and read this. Okay, um, so the next one I'm going to come on to is um, Microsoft To Do. Um, so this again is an application included within Microsoft 365. Um, this also has a, a desktop version available, uh, and like a lot of the other apps, you, you, there is a smart uh, smartphone and tablet version as well. Um, so for those of you that like writing lists, I'm one of them. Lots of people have different ways that they manage their workload or, or even manage uh, their private life. Um, I tend to be someone that writes lists quite a lot. Um, and Microsoft To Do is basically a, uh, an application where you can create digital lists um, just of tasks. Um, for those of you that have got iPhones, it's similar to the Reminders app. Um, so you can just come in on your tasks. You can set one up. Uh, write what the task is, uh, you can set a due date, um, notifications so you can customize them, how often you want to be notified about it, uh, and set it as a recurrence. And basically, you can, as you can see, it's really simple, you can just create lists of tasks. Now, why to do is quite a useful feature is it actually can pull in um, information from some of the other apps in 365. So not only can you create uh, your own lists manually in here, um, if you've got any tasks assigned to you in Microsoft Planner, they will also be pulled through and added in here automatically. Um, and in the My Day function, um, you'll see the, the dialog box that's popped up on the right. Um, it actually monitors for potential tasks um, from Outlook. So if you've had an email conversation with someone and they, for example, have said, um, do you have a solution for this? And you've sent them a, re a reply email saying, uh, yes, I do, and I'll have it for you for next Tuesday. Um, the AI will actually pick that up and it will say two days ago, you said, in this case, I'll let you know, would you like to add that as a task? Uh, and if you do, you just click plus and it will automatically put it in your task list. So it kind of becomes a one-stop shop for, for a lot of your workload. So monitoring your emails, um, as I said, pulling tasks in from Microsoft Planner and then adding it to tasks you've created yourself. Uh, so you've kind of got a one-stop shop for, for your workload, basically. Um, it's not a very glamorous application, but actually, as you can see, because it pulls in from different places, you're only checking your workload in one place, which can save you a lot of time. Um, there are a few other features. Uh, for example, if you flagged any emails in Outlook, uh, you can select that option and it will show you a list of them there. Um, some people you do use that feature in their emails um, and it allows you to monitor it from here. Um, you can also set some tasks as important if they're higher priority. Um, and you can create multiple lists as well. You've got the option to create new lists, so you can have different lists for different um, aspects of your work. Um, so yeah, it's um, and it's also uh, available in Outlook. Um, if we go through to there, you'll see this is Outlook uh, online. Uh, you've got a list of um, some of the apps on the left hand side. So obviously mail, calendar, but to do list is also there. So you can actually access it straight from from Outlook as well. So if you're a person that likes to stay on top of tasks, um, you do like writing lists, I'd, I'd recommend you give this a, a try. Um, like some of the automated notifications and stuff, it means um, if you do forget things, you'll get prompted um, automatically. And um, that's that's quite useful, particularly when you're incredibly busy. OK, uh, the last one I'm going to touch on today, there was <laughs> there was a feature in Outlook that I was hoping to show, but I found out um, recently that Microsoft had discontinued it, unfortunately. But um, they are planning on bringing out a replacement feature soon. So as soon as they do, uh, we'll test drive it uh, and probably publish a blog on our social media. What uh, feature was that, James, that they've taken off? So it was called Board View, and it was available in Outlook Online um, in your calendar. Uh, and basically, it, it was a it, you could create different boards, which essentially was, was a digital canvas where you could pin um, information. So you could pin documents, you could pin hyperlinks, you could pin people's contact details, milestones calendars or a whole range of things and it was basically like a personal version of a SharePoint site so where we've looked at SharePoint sites uh, 
in previous webinars and said that you can create sort of interactive um, collaboration areas um, for information sharing. Um, that was kind of a personal one to yourself. Um, I thought it was a really good feature. I'm not sure why they've got rid of it, but hopefully what they bring out to replace it may be even better. Um, so yeah. So the last one I'm going to show you is um, called Viva Insights. Now Viva is actually a family of apps within 365. Um, there's Microsoft have released a few more this year, um, but this is one of them. Um, and basically it's accessed uh, in Microsoft Teams. So uh, when you're in Microsoft Teams, if you select the three dots on the left hand side, it will bring up or you can select apps itself. It's uh, one of the um, apps that you can add into your t uh, in Teams environment and it will actually pin it on the left hand side, as you can see. Now, uh, Viva Insights was it, it's basically an application to monitor your well-being and your workload uh, with regards to sort of time management. Um, and this was really pushed by Microsoft during the pandemic when majority of people were working remotely or, or hybrid um, to actually um, think about how you're using your time. Um, when we were all in the office pre-pandemic, uh, you kind of had defined ends to your day um, and you obviously had your colleagues to, to lean on and support uh, and catch up with. Now more and more of us are working, um, well, firstly, through the pandemic, we didn't, a lot of us didn't have a choice. We had to work remotely. Uh, but now as we've come out of that, people are still opting to remote work or hybrid work. Um, so this application actually allows you to, to manage your time a bit better um, and also think about how you're feeling when you may not necessarily have people working next to you that you can lean on if you're stressed or not sure of something. Um, so it allows you to actually think about how you're working uh, yourself. Um, so there's a few bits in here. Uh, this is the, the home dashboard for it. Um, there's a well-being section. Um, this has a few features. So you can select, select um, quiet time. It actually monitors how many meetings you're doing through your Outlook calendar or through your team's environment. Um, you can also set a focus plan. And what that does, is it monitors your Outlook calendar and if it identifies any uh, times of the day when you're, you haven't got a meeting or some sort of action uh, or a prior event, it can actually block out periods of your day um, to allow you to concentrate on your work without being distracted. So rather than having to, if you've got a gap in your calendar, people can still get hold of you. This will actually block it out so it will show you as busy uh, and it gives you that breathing space to actually get some, maybe get some other work done. Um, so if you're someone that's constantly being called into meetings or, um, you know, your phone's constantly ringing, this is quite useful to actually block areas of your day to allow you to uh, to concentrate on um, other stuff. Um, there's also a productivity feature. So um, this actually monitors your meeting. A lot of this is geared around meetings because obviously hybrid remote work, we do rely on uh, either Teams or Zoom or Google Spaces, whatever, to meet. So it actually monitors it and it gives you some um, analytics about your meetings. So how many, um, how much time you spend in it, um, how many meetings were less than an hour, um, and just gets you to understand a bit more. It was, it was kind of, um, it was kind of helping people to not sort of get fatigued at home. Because conversely, you would think when working from home that you may, some people, thought they, they may not work as hard, um, but actually the opposite has been true for a lot of people that because you're um, at home and you don't have commutes or um, various other things, uh, some people are actually pushing pushing their hours and actually working um, longer, starting earlier, finishing later, doing a lot more. Um, and because you don't have that oversight from, from colleagues to maybe say, you know, take a break or whatever, um, it's, it's quite interesting to actually monitor how you work at home. Um, the last section is teamwork. So it actually monitors some of your communication habits, um, meetings, uh, shows you who you engage with the most. Uh, you can pin uh, suggested people as contacts. So it kind of gets you to understand um, how you're working, how you're working in meetings, who you're working with, how much time you're spending. Um, and it's just a, a, a useful tool to, to analyze that. 
Um, but the last feature in it that I did want to show you, um, and this again relates back to remote and hybrid working, um, is called virtual commute. Um, so as you can see, this uh, in Viva Insights, you can actually set what your working days are and your working hours. Um, and as I said, people at home, they, they started to find trends that people at home, working at home actually didn't finish on time. So when we were in the office, there'd be this defined end of the day where everyone would get up and go home. Um, it's quite common now for people, hybrid and remote workers to go, I'll just do one more email, I'll just do one more task, write one more report. And you actually find that your hours creep up. Um, so this was designed to basically give you that, that defined end of the day that, that you were used to in the office and may, and may not necessarily have now. So you can set this to go off at a particular time of day. Um, so normally people set it about five minutes before what their, their actual scheduled finish time should be. And it will send you a notification in Teams. It will pop up, as you can see, they're ready to wrap up. And then you'll get the option to um, begin your commute. Um, and what this does is it firstly allows you to take stock of what you've done today. So you can see any meetings that you've had. Um, did you attend them? Uh, you can see tasks that you maybe have been assigned to you or assigned yourself. Um, did you complete them? If you didn't, you've got the option to reschedule meetings, reschedule tasks. So it's just, as I said, taking stock of, of what you've actually achieved today uh, and whether you need to defer anything to it to another time. The second thing it does is gives you a heads up about what you've got coming up tomorrow. Um, so if you've got any tasks that are due tomorrow, these will show in here. Um, it will also show you any meetings that you've got um, coming up so you can actually um, check that you're, you've prepared for what, what you've got the next day and if you've not forgotten to do something in preparation for any of this stuff. And then it gives you an optional um, option to uh, wind down. So this is all about sort of mental health and, and your own well-being. Uh, you've got the option to reflect on your day so you can actually give yourself um, a mood rating using um, some emojis. Um, this actually monitors over time so you you can actually look back and see times when you've been pretty stressed um, based on your reflection scores and try and work out why that was. It may be obvious, it may not. Um, and it's, it's all about uh, understanding um, yourself um, and how you work. Um, it can also um, give you some videos, the kind of relaxation type stuff to help you chill out if that's your thing. Um, so yeah, it's this is all about time management, making sure you're not burning out, making sure that if you haven't got that support network at home that you maybe were used to in the office, that you can um, think about your time, how you're managing it, uh, making sure that you're not um, pu pushing the boundaries, shall we say. Uh, and then that's done and that's your prompt to shut your device off and actually go go and live your life um like we would do if we were in the office um so yeah it's a it's a feature i've used before it's it's quite good i am someone who's guilty of of going past my scheduled time quite a lot when i'm at home so this is quite a good prompt to say actually you know what if you're in the office you'd be going home now so why is it any different because you're at home um so yeah feature um that you that's great make. james thank you very oh, much geez. interesting stuff yeah that's very much the, the, the pandemic isn't it the, the <clears throat> what we all had to live through there has, has, has led to you know and yeah it's available outside of, of sort of the 365 environments this is sort of microsoft's um version of this isn't it you know, of, yeah i mean the the reflection bit may seem a bit cheesy um but there is actually for larger businesses, I'm, I'm not sure if Microsoft are planning on releasing this for smaller businesses, but for, for medium and large businesses, they've got a feature that that uses that. So um, managers, senior managers can actually monitor morale across uh, the business. That's interesting. We've got, a, we've got a, actually a, a question actually in the Q&As about that, whether there is a you know, a version of this that the HR team would would sort of have access to. And, you know, I think the question, the question was asking whether the 
this is just a personal thing or whether the information would be shared higher up. So do you, do you know how it works from that point of view? Yeah, so so this is a personal one. It's, it's private to you. Um, so it's just a way that you can monitor your own sort of well-being, um, uh, own sort of state of mind. Um, but like I said, there is a version um, that you can procure as a, as a larger organisation and roll out. Um, and that will uh, take those um, reflections and um, publish them up to HR or sort of senior managers um, so they can like monitor across. So if you're in a, a really large organisation with thousands of employees um, and suddenly one team, they're all putting upset emojis um, for a couple of days in a row, you know, that mm. kind of highlights to HR, oh, there might be a problem there um, and they can go and look. Um, so yeah, it's not something I've used because I've not been in an organisation that's had enough people who've been big enough. Just, it looks like it's uh, Viva Insights for Managers, so maybe that's yeah. what we look at perhaps for a future webinar would be, would be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I have looked... I have looked into it before and um, oh. yeah, I mean, I'm more than happy to, to do a blog on it or, or a webinar um, to go through the sort of information. So for larger companies, this that may be something you may want to look at, but the but the, the one built into Teams, the, the one I've just shown is, is private, so no one else oh. will see that. Okay, that's, that's good to know. Okay, no, that's, that's really interesting. And then I think we've got um, a couple more questions. Now. Let me just, uh, sorry, just pull up my questions. Um, Got one question. This is back on uh, Planner, which is the thing you did first, wasn't it? Um, okay. Got a question. Do these tasks get allocated to an individual's Outlook calendar? So it's about the, yeah, the integration between Planner and Outlook. Yeah, that's a good question. To, yeah. To... So you'll yeah. get, um, so you'll get um, Outlook notifications. So you'll you'll receive emails saying. Uh, as I said, that you've been assigned a task. So you go um, to that task you assigned me then, for example, there. Yeah. Did you did you did you set a reminder? Is it kind of like an automatic thing? No, it's not set on have you? I don't think. So, so you... it will be in so we'll just check in the plan settings to make sure these notifications. So yeah, ah, someone oh, assigned yeah. to task me. So um so It'll by default. Then. Yeah, so you will have an email saying that you've been assigned that task. Um and then you see the second option there, a task assigned to me is late due today or due in the next seven days. Um, so for that, those reminders, when your tasks are coming up um, to their due date, uh, you will receive email notifications about that. Um, when someone assigns a task to you, you'll get an email notification, but you can also have a mobile notification as well if, if your mobile numbers are, are set up in your 365 profiles. Um, you can also tick the option to have an email sent to the group when a task is assigned or completed. So if the group are monitoring, you know, tasks. Yeah. However, I will cover that with if this becomes a very busy plan, uh, you may want to reassess what notifications you have because you, if you're involved with a number of different plans and, and a lot of tasks, your inbox is going to fill up quite quickly. So. It's useful having notifications, but you do have the option to turn them off. You, you, you can turn them off. And I can confirm that I did get a, an email at 10.44 saying James assigned a task to me. So that, that did Excellent. work. That's good. Excellent. Okay. Um, the only other question we've got, just one more. Somebody saying, um, I'm a bit confused about the difference between planner and to do. Um, can you just run through that again, what the main differences are there? Yeah, so um, so planner, you would set up for a specific piece of work or maybe a specific activities within your team. Um, and, and what it does is it just simply gives you a way of, of visualizing your workload, um, assigning work out um, and, you know, keeping track of, of things. To do is um, it's primarily a personal task list um so it it's basically if you think of it it's just like a digital sh shopping list i mean they've actually got a groceries option there um you know that's just to sort of give you an idea how to use it but it's for you to to create um tasks uh for yourself so these might not necessarily be related to team activities it may be some personal tasks or it may be 
stuff that's confidential to you, you know, things you've got to do, maybe appraisals you've got to write or, um, you know, a whole range of things. But why to do is useful is, is, as I said, it's not only the task that you put in yourself um, and lists that you write, but the fact that it can pull in any tasks assigned to you from Planner mm. and also interrogate your emails to see if there's any potential tasks. I mean, we quite often reply to emails and say, yes, I'll do this, or yes, I'll have that for you for next week or whatever. But then we may not actually keep a record of that. And, and you, you know, if you're really busy, you may forget things or things may slip. So the fact that it's monitoring it on you and, and recommending potential tasks, which then once you've added in, will then trigger notifications. So it's all about you not having to um, remember absolutely everything that you've been asked to do. It's actually remembering it for you and prompting you at the right time. Um, so yeah, okay. does that make sense? That's to me, yeah, yeah. Hopefully that's, yeah. Uh, okay. hopefully that's it. Okay, great. So um, I think we're probably we're done for today. Then I think that's probably a good place to to wind up. So thank you, James. That was uh, very interesting. And and um, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. And um, you know, keep an eye on um, Eventbrite and LinkedIn for future um, webinars. What are we talking about next week, James? I think we've got a popular one next week, haven't we? We're doing uh... yeah. Ne next week is Power Apps, so it's going to look at. The um, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power BI. Mm -hmm. There's quite a lot. Of those. That, that'll be an interesting one. So lots mm -hmm. to learn about about those. Okay. Thanks very much, everybody.